Hi, I'm Larry and welcome to my studio. I thought we'd get right into it today. Uh, today's project is going to be a pastel and this is a picture of some Canadian geese that I took at our local uh, refuge we have over there. It's a, what's left of a swamp and they've, they've preserved it. We get a lot of waterfowl that come through and the Canadian geese like to stop there and raise their families. So if you're interested in following along you can go to my blog spot and you'll find a, a link to the page where you'll find this picture and also uh, this drawing that I've made uh, from from this. Now I've enlarged you know I just I drew it out on a, on a single sheet of paper put it in my computer and then enlarged it so that I could make it the size that I wanted and then I just pieced it together so there's like three different different pieces here that make up this this drawing and from there what I did is that I put on the back of it I don't know if you can see that uh, I, I just ran a chalk over all of the lines and then I took the the back end of my this is a color shaper. I use these all the time to, to get into small spots. But I just took the, I taped it, and then I just took the back end of the color shaper and just went over it. You can use a pencil if that's better for you. But that just, just transfers the drawing. And then here, I want to show you all of this so you know where I'm starting off. This is a piece of, of uh, foam core that I, I used and I took some of the, this is Golden's Ground for Pastel and um, I, I put a coat of that on here. I mix it about one, one part of the ground to one part water and then paint it on with a with a brush and it gives me a nice sanded surface. You can buy sanded paper that's that's no no problem. Um, it, the paper itself is a little bit uh, bigger or the the foam core is a little bit bigger than uh, what I needed so I just taped it off. I had way too much this is called negative space where there's really nothing in it and I, I I wanted that space there, but I didn't want as much as if I had included this extra space and it just um, couldn't make the, the geese any bigger to fill up that space. So you want to make, make your subject as big as you can, but you also want to make sure that you've got a, a good um, flow of, of negative space to go along with it. So that's where I am. Uh, this is this is black. I like to work on a on a black or or a toned surface. E uh, even when I'm doing like my acrylics, uh, I, I just it's a personal preference. You do not have to use black or or any other color. You can you can use white or whatever color you like. Another thing that I've done is that I've pre-selected some some colors that I'm going to be using. Um, uh, that way I don't have to dig through all of them and then I keep them in this box and they're already sorted and I don't have to find them again. So that's that's where I've started. Now remember you want to keep your, your reference material someplace where you can look at it and look at it often. Um, you know what I what I teach here is the way I do things. You know, they, they're not right, they're not wrong, they're just the way I do them. So what I like to do is I like to, to get my subject matter based in first. And so what I'm going to do here is, is come in and I'm just going to base in the geese, maybe base in a little bit of the water. And then, you know, once I get that done, then I'll work on the background before I finish up the, the geese. So let's get started. Now I kind of go in the same order as I do when I'm painting acrylics and that is to, to find um, a, a, a darker version of the thing, you know, of the color I'm working on. 
and then I'll, I'll make it lighter at the end. Also, when you're putting your, your chalk down, and I, I, I don't know what color these are, you just, that's the one thing I don't like about pastel is that I can't tell my students what they are. This is just kind of a weird pinkish tan color. But this is, this right now will be the lightest color. Later on, I'll come back and add some, some lighter colors to get the highlights. But what I'm doing is that I am following the shape of the bird. This bird is round this way. He's also round that way and kind of coming at an angle. So you want your, your brush strokes, or brush strokes, your chalk strokes to kind of follow that same growth pattern of the of the feathers that are on this bird and same with this one comes down and goes around your eye picks up on a lot of subtle things and if you were to just kind of just go across and, and just do it flat like that, your eye would pick up on that. And it would make the, the bird or whatever it is you're working on look flat. So I'm going to pick up a little bit darker color. I'm going to come in. I'm, this, is, this is chalk blending. So I'm just going to blend this in here at this kind of transition area follow it around the bird and this is just another little bit darker another darker version of this and I blend it just a little bit right at the transition area now this is going into some of the um, the, sh the shadows on this bird and wherever you have shadows you have cool colors and what I mean by cool is that there's a lot of of blues and purples in in there so this is this is a kind of an indigo color and I'm going to put some of that in here I will come back in. If I lose some of my pattern, that's okay. Back line there. Now it looks like that front part of the leg is in the light. So put that in there. A little bit of the, the brown. I'll come back in and and blend all of this later. I, if I blend, I start in the, the lighter area and then just, just come in and, and same thing, I'm following the direction of the, the growth. Come in, I, I like to start in the lighter area because that way I can kind of keep it clean. Wipe my finger off, just lightly blend this. Okay. All right, now one of the things I noticed is that I I need to get her feet in under here. I'll do that later. Now th this part here on him is white. But when you underpaint white, you want to paint it with a with like a, a blue. And if you look really close, that really isn't white. That is that is kind of a blue or or a, a lavender color. So again, I'm just gonna take this color, follow the the feathers back. Let's see, get a little bit. Darker. Let's see if that's. Nope. 
don't like that color. Um, do that color again. This is underpainting. You have to underpaint. Underpainting becomes texture. It becomes shadows. It's very important whether it's a pastel or an acrylic or an oil. Underpainting is very important. Okay, I'm going to take a little break here and I want to refocus and get a little bit closer in on my bird. So I'll be right back. I've reset so I'm a little more focused in on the bird. Now if you want to, there's also a, uh, a just a study that I did of a singular uh, goose. It can be a project. Um, but it, it, it's a little more detailed, a little more in-depth. The more you know about your subject, the easier it is to paint it. Uh, one of the things I, I didn't do was put in the opposite leg here. This is that blue that I used over there because it's, it's underneath the bird and it's getting a lot of reflected light from the, the water. So it's just a little bit of that and let's see, is this the color I want? Yeah, that's in kind of a gray. There's a lot of, when you're around something like water, there's a lot of, of reflected light. Uh, and you can see it, you know, in under, under the bird there, but we'll get to that later. Now I want to do the back. It's the, the wing part. Don't worry so much right now about getting all the little detail. I'm, a lot of that detail I'm just going to uh, suggest when I get to that point. Just looking for a color here. Let's see if that's the color. Yeah, I think that's the color. Again, I'm going to just follow, follow the growth pattern. You know, when I'm I'm teaching my my students. That's the biggest problem they seem to have is that they they don't look at something and they don't see something like the the growth patterns on feathers or fur or hair or how a flower grows. If you if you look at a flower, you'll see a lot of the the veins and, and wrinkles and stuff follow a certain pattern. The more you can see, the easier it, it's going to be when, when you start to paint something. That's why doing studies and things like that are really important. It gives you a, a more intimate knowledge of your subject. Okay, got that. I'm going to switch now, find a little bit darker brown for there's feathers over here. Now, some of this may be a little bit hard to see because it's dark on dark, but that will change as we move along. Again, I'm doing a little bit of, of chalk mixing right here. I always encourage my, my students to draw. There's some of this dark here as it comes around this bird. I, I've, I've, right over there is my, my reference material. And I am, my eyes are going back and forth between what I'm doing and my reference material. So if you're wondering why is she doing that? It's because I'm looking at my reference material. I can't commit all of this to memory. Okay, now I'm going to find... Let's see. I'm looking for my darkest... Let's see, is this a dark blue? Yeah, this is, this is another really dark blue. Come up here and just 
throw some of that blue in. Remember, this is shadows and it's underpainting. Little tail feathers here. I'll have to put some brown back in. There's a shadow that kind of comes right along here where the wing kind of tucks down under, under the, the belly feathers. All birds are different. They have a different way that they hold their, their wings are basically the same, but the way their feathers will, will fluff up over them is a little bit different. So be aware of that. Okay, let's see, what else can I do? Oh, on, on this bird, there's not much of her, her wing showing. Um, I don't know if, I, I think this is the male in the front. He was a little protective of the other one, but they were very curious. They kind of walked up to me. Looked me over. Wondered if I had something to feed them, which I didn't. Okay, now now this is where I'm going to break out my, my little blender thing here. Oh, let me put some of that dark, dark in on the tail. One of the things about pastel, and it's kind of a running joke with us all, is that you never have the right color. And that is just so true. I'm using this because I need to get close. I'm still following the shape. The way that the way that the feathers lie on the wing. You know, when I break, I also take take this outside and blow the chalk dust off. And I'll say this again: if you are in a classroom situation, do not blow it off while you're sitting next to somebody, because if they have a respiratory problem, this could the dust could trigger it. So take it outside and if there's a trash can you can shake it off over the trash can. Or just blow it off. Blow it. Find out which direction the wind is and then blow it so that it's going away from you. Wiping that off a little bit. Come here. And I'm going to take some of that that dark blue that I was using and put a little bit right there for start the shadows. This is by no means the the end. This I'm just getting started. This is just underpainting. But I'm kind of setting the stage here. All right, I'm going to break again, and this time I'll refocus up on the on the neck on these birds. And I'll right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, got refocus. I actually put it on a different easel, so. I didn't have so much distortion in in the picture. Now, one of the things about doing black, you have to actually put some blue into it. Um, if you're working like with this this photograph, you'll see this light spot here. You have to remember that the camera has its limitations and it may make it look um, kind of gray, but it's better to use a color. And this is just that um, that color that I've used on other parts of the of the bird. 
the color just brings a little bit more life into it. And it's probably there. Um, if, if you were looking at these critters, um, you know, in person, you would probably see more color in them than you would um, in, in a photograph. It's just, just the way cameras have come such a long way and digital cameras are pretty amazing, but they still have their limitations. So you have to remember that when you're when you're drawing or when you're painting. Um, th this is just that it's kind of a almost a lavender color. Gonna switch and see if I've got. See a little bit of. Keeping my hand out of the way. That that dark blue. One of those dark blues that I was using. Top of his bill right there. And sometimes, you know, you'll be using colors and it might seem a little odd or off or something. But once you get it, get it done, you'll, you'll see that it brings some life. And this, like, I'll keep saying this is just underpainting. Um, this is kind of a, a lavender color going to come up here underneath. Yeah, it's not even dark enough. Um, let's see if this one, this is a little bit darker, kind of lavender blue. Remember this is in shadow under his chin. And um, this is white. You're doing white, um, you want to kind of underpaint with a, a cool color like this this blue and then I'm going to take this is just a lighter color blue and come up here and, and paint in the the lighter area on their cheeks they have that little white patch that runs around right under their chin. This one only has a little bit right there and right there just because her head's turned away from the sun a little bit. This is underpainting. This is just where I start. Now you might think I'm already working on black why do I need to put black in there? Well, you'll see in a second, I hope. Okay, this black is much, much darker than the background. Again, I'm following the, the growth of the feathers. Now I'm not going to do the eye right now. I'm going to work around the eye. I'll do that do that later. Again, my my reference material right now it's just right down there so I'm looking back and forth at it come in get that get the head the head here is pretty dark
the more you look at something, the more you're going to see. I can see some variations in this this color from being a, a real black black kind of this this is actually a charcoal it's closer to the color of the the board just a little bit darker bring that up there beak is kind of got that beak bill kind of got that color in there Now don't get frustrated. You know, at certain points these things will look like there is no hope for them. I call it the terminal ugly stage. But if you work past it, that's just really a good underpainting. Now I'm going to take my my color shaper again. I've got a wet a, a wet washcloth over here that I'm wiping it off on and then drying it off on my smock. But I want to start in uh, on the, the white area and just lightly blend. I'm not, I'm not worried about little, little smudges or anything at this point. I just want to kind of get this blended, kind of see where I am. Okay, I got the white done. Now this area gets blended in with the black because it's just kind of a highlight in the in the black. Work around the eye. Come over the head. And just blend this down. This is just underpainting. This is just just where I start. A lot of people get frustrated because they they think that it should magically appear on their paper, whatever they're working on, and it doesn't. It it takes steps. If you if you look at some of the the magazines and, and read the articles, some of these, these artists will spend months and, or years. I, I've seen where they said, well, this took me two years to do. It's like, well, okay, I don't have that much patience. I would get frustrated with that. But, you know, if that's what you want to do, you know, and, and it, it probably started out looking pretty pretty crummy so I'm just going to come in blend these down and we're going to end this in our next uh, part on this part two I'll come in I've got most of this uh, blocked in and now I'll come back in and, and work on the background. So remember, if you want to follow along, you can go to the blog spot and get the material, the drawing, and the photograph. And if you want to send me an email, you'll find an email there as well. So until next time, I want you to Go and talk to your friends, your neighbors, and check up on them. And, and most of all, I want you to keep painting. And I hope to see you again in class real soon.